Hello everybody, Raven Knight here. So, I've been playing Black Myth Wukong and I've been streaming it for a few days. Now that I've gotten really into it and gotten the hang of the game, real talk, it's fantastic. Y'all who know me know that I'm not a huge Souls-like game player. I didn't really get into Dark Souls or Demon Souls or Lies of P or Sekiro or anything like that. In fact, the only Souls-style games I've really been playing and enjoying are the Neo series, Wolong, and Elden Ring. So I was admittedly very nervous to pick up this game, but I'm a huge fan of Journey to the West and Sun Wukong, so I just couldn't avoid it. I had to give it a shot. And after playing it for some time and really getting a feel for the game and really coming to understand it, I can definitively say that it is amazing. I mean, the animation, art, and graphics are outstanding. The fight mechanics, I feel, are creative and fun. The bosses are all unique and varied in how they battle, and the overall feel of the game is just, it's beyond description. It really is the kind of Souls game I can really sink my teeth into, and I'm very happy to say that it seems I'm not alone, as it's already broken download records. As of the making of this video, I think it's at 10 million downloads in the last three days, and has taken the gaming world by storm, despite, honestly, a very pathetic smear campaign from games journalists who tried to destroy the game before release. Yeah, most of y'all know about this controversy. But now that the game is out there, I was thinking that it would all die down. How wrong I was. We see now that the smear agenda is not done, as this one article writer proves. From DOT Esports, this article writer tries to claim that Wukong is attracting, quote, the wrong type of fans. This article is special, guys. It was sent to me the other day by a fan, and after just reading over it, I couldn't help but think, this is pathetic. But it's also hilarious because I don't think this writer has any self-awareness. You'll see what I mean. Let's talk about this article together. But first, I need to change my avatar to something more appropriate. There we go. All right. Let's get into it. Black Myth Wukong's shameless lack of diversity is attracting the wrong type of fans. We shouldn't be carrying hate into what should be a safe space for everyone. Written by Tom Foley. A safe space for everyone? A, a safe space... Okay, Wukong is a single-player game with no multiplayer options. You cannot be team-killed, you cannot be bullied by any players or teammates, and you cannot be abused by anyone other than the enemy bosses. I can't think of a safer space than this. The toxic trolls in the gaming community can only hurt you if you let them. I'll be honest, this is the kind of game I'd go to if I was sick of the toxicity in a PvP game, because here I can go ape on a bunch of non-human demons and enjoy myself. Tell me, why isn't this a safe space for you? Can you not disconnect from the real world and play this game? Black Myth Wukong just launched to a stellar reception, garnering a whopping 2 million players within a day, but things aren't all sunshine and rainbows. Shortly before release, developer Game Science came under fire for its streaming guidelines that reportedly prohibited creators from talking about politics and feminist propaganda. The studio also faced criticism after alleged sexist comment surfaced, suggesting Black Myth Wukong needed no female players, alongside an apparent strew of grotesque, oddly genitalia-focused remarks. All right, all right, allow me to explain the context here for those who don't know. Game Science, the developer behind the game, was approached by a mysterious outside company whose name I won't repeat here, but I will say their name rhymes with Meat Lady Inc., who tried to extort them into hiring their services as a consultant on the game. Now, Game Science told them to get lost, and as a result, they started a smear campaign, digging up whatever dirt they could on the developers and strong-arming game journalists into smearing the company in the hopes of killing this game. The supposed sexist comments come from a very poorly translated message that has since been revealed to not be accurate. And as for the recent request to not talk about a feminist agenda, well, yeah, that's because they want you to talk about the game. And they want everyone to talk about the game and not feminism or politics. Tell me, why is that a bad thing? Why do you frame that as a bad thing? Why do you think games journalists shouldn't talk about politics and that's a bad thing? Shouldn't games journalists and content creators focus on the game that they're playing? See, when I watch someone review a game, I don't want to hear them talk about the political diatribes outside of the game. I want to hear them talk about the game. Somewhat unsurprisingly, this led to hordes of self-proclaimed anti-woke fans coming out of the woodwork to celebrate Wukong's lack of diversity. 
All it takes is a brief glimpse at the comment section on social media to see this kind of sentiment is rife. The most telling thing of all is how the Screen Rant journalist who criticized Wukong's lack of inclusion was bullied off the internet by rabid commenters. No one should ever face hate for doing their job. No, you're right. They should only face hate and smear campaigns if they don't walk in lockstep with your worldview. After all, just look at Game Science, who you're throwing hate at for not doing what you wanted by adding more diversity. Look at all those gamers who, are, who you are hating for doing their job and playing the damn game. Your hypocrisy is staggering. This is all symptomatic of a wider problem that's damaging the industry we love. 100% agreed, so when are you leaving? On August 21st, Puberty's Instagram page shared news of Wukong's breaking Steam single-player record, and the, and the comments are full of unsavory replies from fans delighted the game isn't inclusive. Because it's not gay or woke, a top comment reads, which at the time of writing has nearly 4,000 likes. So proud of this game that doesn't support any genders or sexual orientations unlike the other games nowadays. Another user said, The common sentiment is that liberals are in tears, and it sounds like right wing gamers couldn't be happier. Along with all the other gamers, look, I went to go read those comments. Yeah, there are a few that are thankful the game isn't pushing diversity, but most of them are in response to people like you who are demanding diversity. They're telling you to shut up and enjoy the game for what it is, which, agreed, you should. There are quite a few top comments that say they love the game and are proud of how well it's done without a mention of diversity. You conveniently jumped over those. It doesn't stop there. On August 20th, creator Ryan Kennel shared a YouTube video called Woke Game Journalist Triggered Over Black Myth Wukong. The comments paint a similar picture, and it won't take you long to find dozens of parallel examples. Quote, I'm getting this game just because it doesn't have diversity. Or one user replied, while another writes, journalists would give it 10 out of 10 if it were black chick with dong instead. How clever. You don't have mirrors in your house, do you? You can't be this lacking in self-awareness, bro. You, you just can't. You are literally feeding fuel to their fire. You're giving them exactly what they want. In fact, bro, in fact, you're going to actually prove this guy's point in literally the next paragraph. No, you guys don't believe me? Watch this guy prove the point of this troll. Watch. I gave Wukong 8 out of 10 in my review, and I'll stand by it. Gameplay-wise, Wukong is fantastic, but after 40-plus hours, I've yet to encounter a single female character aside from one inanimate mini-boss called the Mother of Stone, and no one can convince me that's a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't make this shit up. So, let me remind you. Earlier, you complained that this commenter, that this commenter said, quote, Journalists would give it a 10 out of 10 if it were black chick with dong instead. That's what they said. That was the quote. Okay. And now you're saying that you gave it an 8 out of 10 because while the gameplay was great, you were upset. Why? Because there weren't enough women. So literally, you would have given it a 10 out of 10 if you had seen more inclusivity, which is exactly what that commenter was mocking you for. You have literally proved the troll's point in literally the paragraph following it. You know what it's like? It's like if someone pointed at you and said, Ha ha, I'll bet you're so stupid you can't even remember to get dressed in the morning. And you counter that with, Nuh-uh, my mom always reminds me to. Bro, you haven't disproven any criticism. You've only confirmed their criticism. You are proven to be the very troll they're mocking you for. Oh, and follow-up point. No one can convince you it's a good thing. Why would we? It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. I mean, look at it this way. In the game of chess, there's only one female character on both sides of the board, the queen. Are you going to say that's not a good thing too? We need to make bishops into nuns now to add more inclusivity and make it good by your metric? Why is it inherently a good thing to have more women in a product? For that matter, why is it inherently a good thing to have more men? Or less men? Or less women? It doesn't add or take away from the product. You literally said the gameplay was incredible. Great. That's what you want to talk about. The gameplay, the mechanics, the graphics. But you still just won't give it full marks because where are all the women at? Bruh, you can't be serious. 
Journey to the West, the story Black Myth Wukong is based on, has plenty of female characters, and there's even a city populated by women like Zelda's Gerudo Town. None of this appears in Black Myth Wukong. I wonder why. Oh, here, I'll explain it. You want to know why? I'll explain it. Watch this. <clears throat> here we go. Because this is a sequel to Journey to the West, with Wukong going to very different places and locations. It's because almost every NPC Wukong meets is a Yaogwai demon that he has to kill. It's because, despite the woman's kingdom indeed being in Journey to the West, it was one of the most boring chapters of the book with almost no action involved until the scorpion demoness Setsu Jing appears to abduct San Zhang. So it wouldn't be a great setting for this game. It's because there are no male kingdoms in the game either. There are no largely populated towns of people that you ever go to. Every region is sparse, barren, and empty, filled with demons and monsters with only one or two humans that you encounter. There are realms only the fearless would go to as the opening makes very clear that only the most brave and powerful could hope to survive here. It's because if there were a bunch of NPC women, they would still just be more Yaogwai for Wukong to beat. And maybe the developers weren't fond of the idea of, of the player beating up a bunch of women. There's a thought for you. Considering the reports of sexism running rampant within the developer's workplace, we can only speculate. But I strongly believe Wukong's lack of diversity is adding fuel to the wrong fire. Diversity isn't a bad thing, and we shouldn't be afraid of it. Half the people on the planet are women, around 10% of humans identify as LGBT+, according to a 2021 survey. We live in a diverse world, and there's no escaping it. All right, clearly you haven't given this any thought, so here, I'll help you. All right, so if women make up half the world's population, how many women make up the population of Yaogwai? Because that's primarily what this game is made up of. Yaogwai, the demons. Want to check the statistics and get back to me on how many lady demons there are in the world? I'd love to see those numbers. And as for the 10% of the world is LGBT, um... I'm willing to bet that's a high estimate, but let's be generous and say that's true. Okay, 10% of people in the world are LGBT. That's still statistically low. So why are you demanding they appear in everything? Having a diverse cast of characters makes games more believable. Ah, so true. Th that, guys, that's so true. I could not believe in the authenticity of this story about a magical monkey god beating the shit out of demons and monsters while waging war with heaven in the clouds unless I saw more women in it. I, I just can't believe this is real otherwise. How could you possibly believe this is a real setting or a realistic setting unless we saw more women? I mean, come on, guys. Real. That, fair point. It helps female and minority players feel represented. Okay, Real question here, sarcasm aside, real question, is that not infantilizing? The idea that women and minorities can't enjoy something unless they see themselves in it, is that not insulting? Hey, look, I have written stories where females were the main character, like Night Angel and Shogun of Crime. I've played games where you play as a female character, like Tomb Raider and Stellar Blade. I most certainly design my characters to be women when I customize characters like a Neo, Wolong, or For Honor. And I've watched movies that star women like Alien and Kill Bill. My best friend Hannah enjoys drawing my avatars and pictures as women. But guess what? Newsflash it. You may not believe this. I'm not a woman. So, the question must be raised. How is it possible that I can enjoy all these things without being a woman? How can I enjoy Tomb Raider, Stellar Blade, Night Angel, Shogun of Crime, Alien, Kill Bill, Neo, Wolonger, For Honor, or all the pictures Hannah draws of me? How can I enjoy all those things if I'm not a woman? Don't I need to see myself represented? Does it blow your narrow mind that someone could possibly appreciate something or relate to characters that don't share my gender or skin tone? Have I blown your mind inside out? <clears throat> what am I saying? Probably not. Hard to blow up what wasn't there to begin with. Diversity helps break down stereotypes, like the utterly untrue notion that women don't enjoy games. <laughs> no, bro, it just creates new stereotypes. You, you are the new stereotype. Remember that troll earlier that you literally not only talked about, but proved to be accurate within the span of a single paragraph? You have met the stereotype of an easily offended game journalist. 
Game journalists themselves have become the new stereotype, and you only have yourselves to thank for that. Bruh, do you have any sense of self-awareness? It facilitates richer narratives and fosters more creative storytelling. Well, not necessarily. That depends on the writer. For example, consider the difference between a game like Black Myth Wukong and, say, the Saints Row reboot. Wukong's story and lore is so rich, their journal about different enemies has an exclusive poem for each one. They have whole stories dedicated to each individual enemy. There are callbacks and references to the original Journey to the West and visual storytelling that I haven't seen in ages. Meanwhile, Saints Row? I'm sorry, what was the story again? Something, something, something nachos? I mean, you can't deny it had diversity. It definitely had inclusivity. It had those things. But I think we can all tell which game is superior. And games that deliberately omit diversity feel narrower in scope and perspective, not to mention putting off prospective buyers. Two million downloads in the first day with 10 million downloads in three days. I'm sorry, buddy. You win no points with that criticism. This game has broken literal records with its buyers. It's the most sold single-person game on Steam right now and has taken the world by storm. I'm sorry. That was a... <clears throat> You win no prize for that one, sir. Purely from a business perspective, diverse games appeal to more players, which can improve sales by helping developers tap into new markets. Ugh. Again, not necessarily. Diversity does not sell. Just because you try to appeal to everyone does not mean that everyone will become your buyer. Game Science promised us a soul-style game based on Sun Wukong. No modern politics. No forced agendas, no outside consultants, just a game about Sun Wukong beating the crap out of Chinese-style demons. That's what they promised, and it's what they delivered, and it sold big. In fact, there are marketing ads that make fun of this diversity and marketing thing you seem to be praising. I'll give you an example. Think of the Old Spice ads where a wife or girlfriend steals her husband or boyfriend's Old Spice body wash. The joke in the commercial is that this breaks the man's heart because it's a product meant for men. The ad is poking fun of the idea that something that was supposed to appeal towards men is now being grabbed by women. Not saying women can't use it. But what is being said is that it's something originally marketed for men. And they're making fun of the fact that people are upset about the change. You can poke fun at that kind of thing. I'm getting a headache. Let's move on. Diverse games feel more relatable to a broader audience and satisfy the community's growing demand for inclusivity in the industry. False. V very false. See, it is not the community that demands more inclusivity in the industry. It is you. You and your ilk. And it is you and your ilk that have become the bane of the wider gaming community who are all sick of you trying to force diversity and messages onto games when all we want is to enjoy a game. See, the gaming community doesn't care if there are women or men in their game. They just want to enjoy the game. Meanwhile, you claim all you want is inclusivity. But let's be real honest here, Tom. That's not really what you're after. You want to inject your worldview onto it. And let me give you proof. You want proof? I'll give you proof. You say all you want is women in games, right? All right. How about a woman? How about a game with a woman in it? What about Stellar Blade? There are lots of women in that. In fact, you play as a woman. A very attractive woman. Ah, but lest we forget, Eve was too attractive. See, you know, it's not enough to have diversity. It has to be the right kind of diversity. If the woman is too attractive, then it's sexist and wrong and only meant to titillate the male player. Same goes for Genshin Impact. It's not enough that the different regions of Tevat are inspired from real-world cultures or take ideas from their cultures. All the people of those regions must look like the real-world people, too. You see, that's the problem. It's not about simple diversity. You know what? You know what? I'll tell you this. If the later part of the game includes Bai Gu Jing or Zhe Tzu Jing... I now specifically want them to be mind-bogglingly attractive to the point their breasts jiggle at the slightest breath and their faces look so appealing, I want them to eat me. Why? Because I know you won't like it. Why not? Aren't these the women you so crave? Are these not the female characters you've been demanding? Yeah, I mean, they are. Just not the way you want them to be. They create opportunities for marginalized content creators and encourage us to develop empathy for groups we aren't familiar with. 
marginalized content creators can't create content around a game unless they see themselves in it. You know what? How disrespectful can you be? So you're saying a woman, a woman content creator can't create content around a game or enjoy a game unless it has a woman in it. Look, you just said that it gives them opportunities. And the obvious conclusion being that they don't have the opportunity otherwise, meaning they are somehow barred from it. Question, real question. What is stopping a woman from playing Black Myth Wukong? Are you saying that if I was a woman, I couldn't play this game? And what's stopping a black person from playing it? There are no black people in the game. Are you saying black people can't play it? What's stopping a disabled person, an LGBT person? Why can't these people play this game? Where's the lack of opportunity? Hey, here's a reality check for you. I'm not a monkey. And yet I play one in this game. It's not that complicated, bro. I could go on, but I'll stop here for brevity's sake. For brevity's sake? For brevity's sake, you have essentially repeated yourself five times in a row. You've essentially said diverse games will allow more people to enjoy them. You've restated it differently each time, but you've said it five times. You have no evidence that this is true. But you know what? I'm going to give you your chance. I will give you your chance to prove it. Name me five games. Just five games that, are, that meet three criteria. They are high selling. They are widely approved of by the gaming community. And they are hailed for their diversity. That last bit's important. Being hailed for their diversity is very important because the ga if the game isn't praised for its qu for this quality, how can we know that that was the determining factor? You have made a claim that diverse games allow more people to enjoy them. Then I expect to see reviewers say, look how diverse this game is. Go for it. Name me five games that are high selling, widely approved of, and are praised for their diversity. I'll wait. We all share a common hobby, and we should stand together to make sure as many people can enjoy it as possible. Game science doesn't seem to be interested in any of this. I'm not saying every game needs diversity and inclusion shoved down its throat. Far from it. Bullshit. <laughs> Absolute bullshit. Your whole working thesis is that diversity is crucial for video games. You literally took two points off Wukong just because of a lack of diversity and said, no one can prove to me that's a good thing. You're a liar. There are plenty of excellent games that don't have a diverse cast of characters simply because there's no room for them. And I'm sure you complained about that too. But there was room for diversity in Black Myth Wukong, and the developers seemingly chose to ignore it. Where? Where was it? Where was the room? What did you want them to do? I'm dead serious. What were you hoping for? More female demons to beat up? An option to make Wukong a woman? Where was the need for more women in this game? By the way, you keep saying diversity, so you're not just talking about women. You mean diversity of all kinds, right? Did you want black characters? Hispanic characters? LGBT characters? Where do you see the need for all this? You know what? I don't see any white characters, but I'm not complaining about that. When a developer elects to only feature straight male characters, it sends a message that diversity isn't important, or worse, that it's a bad thing. Straight male characters. Straight. You, you literally said, straight. You said that. Hey, moron, did you just assume Wukong's sexuality? I don't know how you could know Wukong's sexuality. How could you know any of the character's sexuality? There's no sex in the game. There's no romance in the game. What, what did you want them to do? Show two male characters doing it before a boss fight? Were you hoping for a Baldur's Gate 3 moment where Wukong opens the door of a barn and comes across a two-lady Yaogwai going at it? You can't be serious. Guys, this is exactly what I mean. You're delusional. You're demanding diversity in a game that doesn't require it. No one with any common sense came to this game hoping to solve the eternal riddle of who gets to go ape with Wukong and, what has, and who his preferred bed partner is for that matter. This is gross. This is actually gross. What kind of person, literally, what kind of person goes to a Souls-style game and says, you know what, it would be great, but it needs more non-hetero female characters? Who in their right mind thinks that? 
This rallies toxic community members who share the same opinion, encouraging passionate gamers to go for each other's throats. Friend, only you are going for any throats. See, the vast majority of gamers have been praising this game, calling it amazing, and thanking Game Science for not inserting all the nonsense you so desperately want. You, meanwhile, are throwing a hissy fit that people are happy about this game. How do I know? Because, again, your only criticism of this game is the lack of ladies and gay characters, as if anyone was hoping to see more of either in this game. Catalyzing and divide between gamers is terrible for the industry. We all share a common hobby, and we should stand together to make sure as many people can enjoy it as possible. The world is divisive enough. There are countless conflicts happening around us that lead to tragic losses of life every day. Gaming is an escape from the tumultuous world we live in. We shouldn't be carrying hate into what should be a safe space for everyone. You know what, buddy? I'll give you that. That's a fantastic point. Games are an escape. Guys, let's be real. This world is messed up. And sometimes we just want to run away from the world and just go to a magical world where we can become Wukong and fight the demons of this make-believe world. We all want that. I think a lot of people see games as their escape from the real world. Agreed. Great point. But remind me, remind me now, who was it that actually tried to use real-world diversity statistics to make demands of this game? Wasn't it you who tried to argue that women make up half the real world's population and that 10% of the real world is LGBT? It was you who argued that diversity helps real world people feel more represented. But now you're saying games exist for us to escape the real world. So, I'm sorry, I guess I'm a little confused. Why are you demanding this game reflect the real world if you want it to be an escape from the real world? Why would you reflect the place you're trying to escape from? Is it because you genuinely don't understand gaming? Or because you'll say whatever you need to say to try and sound like you care about the wider gaming community, when in truth, you only care about fulfilling the marching orders handed down to you by your handlers? Because let's be honest here, your moral compass is a roulette wheel. And if reading this made you mad, I've got one thing to say. Cry more. Oh, friend, I didn't cry reading this, I laughed. I actually laughed so hard I had to show my brother who laughed with me. See, the one crying here is you. See, I love the game. I gave it a 10 out of 10. You gave it an 8 out of 10. Why? Because you didn't see the diversity you crave so much. You are so triggered by this game's success and the elation of its fans that you dug up Instagram comments to ridicule them, calling them all right-wingers and trying to smear the company behind the game. Let me be clear about this. You don't have morals when it comes to gaming. You have marching orders. You don't have integrity. You have a paycheck. You don't have creativity. You have a checklist. You will stand in the middle of a bonfire and complain that it's too hot. You will look success in the face and demand we criticize it. And you will look failure in the face and cry that we didn't approve of it. You will stare at a game that is beloved by the overall gaming community with millions upon millions of downloads within the first 72 hours and have the gall to say it's dividing the community all because it didn't feature what you wanted to see in it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but who's crying? Guys, I'm going to be real with you. This article writer is delusional, lacks self-awareness, and doesn't know what they're talking about. They refuted themselves twice in this article that I can think of, probably more times, and then had the audacity to say that we're crying over them not being happy. I don't have time to cry. I'm too busy kicking demon butt in Black Myth Wukong. This guy, this whole article is one big cry. Couldn't you re-say this whole article just by crying about it? We should have a safe space for gamers. Why can't we have safe spaces for everyone in games? This is dividing the community, guys. This is dividing the community. That's the one that sounds like crying to me. Meanwhile, I'm saying, yeah, I didn't want this diversity nonsense. I won a game where I play as Sun Wukong and beat up demons. Now, if you want to add female demons to the game, sure, go right ahead. I'm not demanding it. It'd be fine if it was there, though. But the idea that the game should be lauded or criticized or lose points just because of that? Nah, man. I know who's crying here. <laughs> and it ain't us. What do you guys think, though? Did you think this article writer made any good points? <laughs> Scratch that. Probably didn't. 
But what did you guys think of this response? Did y'all enjoy it? I hope you did. And what do you guys think of Black Myth Wukong? Have you bought it? If you have, what do you think of it? If you haven't bought it, will you buy it? Let me know why or why not down below. Anyway, guys, that's all the time I got time for. Thank you so much. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care.